Expensive Lifestyle Our modern life is a vicious cycle of consumption and work, one that is very difficult to break and escape from. Some years ago, when I was speaking to a young, well-educated American man from New York, he told me, You know, Swami, I work hard and earn a lot, but I never see any of the money I make. He explained to me that he had put himself through school on a student loan, lived in a rented apartment, and also had a car loan and many other bills to pay. Whenever he got a paycheck, it disappeared as soon as he deposited it into the bank. In these modern times, nothing is free. Education is very difficult to pay for and, in most cases, student loans are necessary. In order to own a house or a car, a mortgage or financing is essential. Healthcare is also prohibitively expensive. In spite of the wide range of services and facilities available, everything has a price. We have to pay, pay, and pay. What's more, the things I have mentioned just represent our necessities and do not even take into account our never-ending and ever-increasing desires. We all are running a rat race in order to keep up, and because of that, there is no rest, peace, or happiness. Day by day, our cost of living is increasing and creating more and more pressure on us to work hard and earn more. Previously, there was job security, but nowadays, there is no, no security in a job. It's hire or fire. Someone once jokingly told me that many bosses say, my way or the highway. Today we might have a job. Tomorrow we may get a notice to look elsewhere. There seems to be no end to our stress and misery. Each day of our life has only 24 hours. How do we spend these 24 hours, and how much money do we need? These are simple questions. If there is more money, there is a problem. If there is less money, then there is also a problem. What causes many of our problems? We imitate others and make our life a burden. Society has become like that. If we do not live as others do, then others start asking, what are you doing? Work, a burden or a compulsion? Other essential questions to ask ourselves and contemplate are, is my work a burden? Do I do it out of compulsion? Do I enjoy it? The first time I went to the United States, I heard the expression, thank God it is Friday. I did not understand what it meant and had to ask my host to explain it to me. This is a common attitude nowadays. People feel they can only enjoy life when all their tasks are done. In fact, many of us work long hours during the week with the idea of relaxing on the weekend. We labor tirelessly through the year with the goal of resting and recuperating over a few weeks of vacation. We even toil year after year with the hope of being able to enjoy a retirement. Often, the motivation for working so hard is to have enough money to get married, have a family, or buy a house. There is nothing wrong with, with those things. But when we always work tirelessly with stress and tension for the future moment, we are missing an important element, the art of being in the present with love and enjoyment. 
overexerting ourselves leads to failure. Oh, leads to fatigue. I mean, it, that's the truth. Overexerting ourselves leads to fatigue, tiredness, and ultimately dissatisfaction. And sometimes the end result is not what we thought it would or should be. There is no doubt that we have to use our talents, abilities, and competitive spirit in our work. But we should also work with an attitude of inner joy and relaxation, because doing so will bring us constant satisfaction. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Engaging the mind The body and the mind are beautiful gifts but if we are not if they are not used properly they become a burden on us Let us illustrate how this can happen with a story that Swami Sri Yukteswar used to tell about a holy man who had miraculous powers. He had many devotees, one of whom visited visited him quite often. And you know, these dogs are freaking the fuck out in the room next to me. Um, Om Shanti. And they all stopped barking. <laughs> Even if it doesn't work for them, because that's like a form of prayer, right? I send those vibrations to them so that they can experience some peace. When I was at the campground for the last month, and this motherfucker would smack his dogs and scream at them for barking, and then throw them outside tied up to his camper, and never fucking walk them or do anything to, to make them feel like there's any reason why they shouldn't be barking 24-7. He would smack him and scream at him and shit. And I wanted to. <sighs> but sometimes when they got put outside, they'd be barking and shit. And I would be like, I love you. And they would kind of like, you would see their ears relax and they'd get these little grins on their <laughs> Oh, shout out those dogs, man. But so it's a prayer to them and you can send them that energy and that's going to have a positive effect on their lives. But most importantly, it's a prayer so that my internal environment is set to that state of peace. So whether or not they're feeling that peace, I'm not even like my perception is completely closed off. I have a bubble of peace, so I can't even hear them. He had so many devotees, one of whom visited him quite often, insisting that he be given a mantra that would change his fortune. The holy man tried to convince his devotee to work diligently and be satisfied with what he already had. Don't run after occult power, he said, but the devotee was relentlessly persistent. The holy man finally agreed to give him a mantra, but warned his devotee, if you practice the mantra, you will soon get a goblin that will do everything you want, but you must handle him carefully. The devotee practiced the mantra as directed, and one day the goblin appeared. I am here to serve you, it said, but on one condition. You must always keep me busy. If not, I will kill you. The man was excited. He first asked for a big house, and the goblin built it in a moment. He then asked for furniture from different countries, and the goblin made them appear in the house in an instant. Whatever the devotee wanted, the goblin gave him. But true to his word, the goblin would say, Unless you give me more work, I will kill you whenever he had completed a task. Before long, the man ran out of ways to keep the goblin busy, 
So he returned, returned to the holy man and pleaded. The mantra worked, but now I am in big trouble. Please save me. The holy man replied, I warned you, but you would not listen. If you want relief from the goblin, tell him to dig a well in which there is a ladder with seven rings. Rungs, whatever. Tell the goblin to climb up and down those seven rungs over and over again until you have new work to give him. In this story, the goblin represents the mind, which, if not engaged in productive work, will surely cause problems. If you do not give me more work, I will kill you. Know your real needs. Prayasa as effort should be properly understood because it can become an obstacle if we labor so hard that we become exhausted. We obviously have to work to get the many things we want and need in life, but we should also have a clear understanding of what is truly necessary. In truth, our needs are few, but our greed is great. To make progress on the spiritual path, we must understand and put certain restrictions on our wants, knowing when enough is enough. The masters say that human wants and needs can be compared to a pair of shoes on our, and our feet. Human wants and needs can be compared to a pair of shoes and our feet. Our feet are a particular size, and if the shoes are either too small or too large for them, we will not be comfortable at all, perhaps even miserable. Similarly, Having too much or too little can create chaos. How much we work is always related to our expectations, desires, and dreams. If our desires are moderate and we are inwardly content, our effort and endeavors will give us more joy and satisfaction. Om Shanti Thank you.